In this example problem, we're looking at elastic collisions. Elastic collisions are one of the two types of collisions. There's inelastic collisions, where all that you know is that the momentum of the object stays constant. And then there are elastic collisions, where not only is the momentum conserved, but also the kinetic energy of the system stays constant. So to start this problem, what you look at first is momentum. Because momentum is conserved in all collisions, whether they're inelastic or elastic, the first thing to always look at is momentum. So the first thing that I need to do, I need to make sure that I, I know which is going to be my positive and negative direction. So I'm going to make to the right the positive direction. So object A's velocity is positive, object B's velocity is negative. And the initial momentum of my system is 2 kilograms times positive 5 meters per second plus the momentum of object B which is 1 kilogram times its velocity of negative 1 meter per second. Again, making that velocity negative is extremely important with momentum because momentum is a vector. So we have the momentum of object A, 10, plus the momentum of object B, negative 1, gives a total momentum of positive 9 kilogram meters per second. After the collision, I don't know either of the two velocities. I don't know the velocity of object A. I don't know the velocity of object B. In fact, I'm not even sure which direction they're traveling after the collision. So to solve this, let each of them be moving in the positive direction. If either of them is spo are supposed to be moving in the negative direction, then as we go through and solve this, we'll get negative answers for our velocities. So as we go through and look at this, the final momentum of the system is the momentum of object A, which is 2 kilograms times the velocity of object A, plus the momentum of object B, which is 1 kilogram times the unknown velocity of object B. So from conservation of momentum, if we let the initial momentum equal the final momentum, we have 9 equals 2 kilograms times VA plus 1 kilogram times VB. So looking at this, there's not enough information to solve this yet. There are two unknowns, the velocity of object A and the velocity of object B after the collision. For our inelastic collision examples, we're either given one of the two velocities after the collision, or we're told that the two objects stick together, which is a perfectly inelastic collision or a completely inelastic collision. And in that case, when they stick together, there's only one velocity after the collision. In this, we don't have that. There are two unknowns that we have, and so we're missing a piece of information. Instead of being given one of the two velocities or being told that they stick together, we're told that this collision is elastic. If these objects collide elastically, the other piece of information that we know is that the total kinetic energy of the system stays constant. So if I look at the initial kinetic energy of the system, it's the kinetic energy of object A, which is 1 half times 2 kilograms times its speed, 5 squared, plus the kinetic energy of object B, 1 half times 1 kilogram times its speed of 1 meter per second squared. Again, when you're looking at kinetic energies, kinetic energies are always positive. Kinetic energies are scalars. They only depend on the speed, so it doesn't matter that the velocity was to the left and the other one was to the right. They're both positive kinetic energies. When you square negative 1 meters per second, you, you get a positive answer. So the kinetic energy of object A is 25. The kinetic energy of object B is 0.5. So adding those two together, I have 25.5 joules of kinetic energy. The final kinetic energy is going to be the kinetic energy of object A, 1 half times 2 kilograms times the unknown velocity of A squared, plus the kinetic energy of object B, 1 half times 1 kilogram times the unknown velocity of object B squared.
And so from the fact that the kinetic energy stays constant, if I set the initial kinetic energy equal to the final kinetic energy, I have 25.5 joules equals a half times 2 kilograms is 1. So this is the velocity of object A squared. A half times 1 is 0.5. So this is plus 0.5 times the velocity of B squared. So now we have our two equations with our two unknowns. So on the next slide, I'll show where to go from there. We're going to use substitution to go through and plug in and solve for our two unknown velocities. So again, we had our momentum equation. The momentum equation was 9 equals 2VA plus VB. And we also had our kinetic energy equation, which was 25.5 equals the velocity of object A squared plus 0.5 times the velocity of object B squared. So to solve this, we need to use substitution. So if I solve the momentum equation for one of the two velocities in terms of the other one, I have that the velocity of object B is 9 minus 2 times the velocity of A. Again, I could have solved for VA. VB was easier because there was just one VB there. And then I'm going to take this velocity and I'm going to substitute it in to the kinetic energy equation. Again, it's the momentum equation that you want to use to solve for the unknown variable. You want to substitute it into the kinetic energy equation. It's just going to be simpler. So with that substitution, I have 25.5 equals VA squared plus 0.5 times the quantity 9 minus 2VA squared. So from that, I'm going to have to multiply this out, which is 81. And then I have negative 18VA minus 18VA. So it's going to be minus 36VA. And negative 2VA times negative 2VA is going to be positive 4VA squared. So if I distribute the 0.5, I have 25.5 equals VA squared plus 40.5 minus 18VA plus 2VA squared. And so just rearranging these terms, I can combine the two VA squared terms. So I have three VA squared minus 18 VA. And if I subtract the 25.5 over to the other side, I get plus 15 equals 0. Now this is something that you could use the quadratic formula for. You can use the solve feature. But something like this is not a completely uncommon multiple choice question where you're not allowed to use a calculator. And if this is on the multiple choice part of the AP test, it will be something like this that is easily factorable. And so I can factor this. I have 3VA minus 3, and I have VA minus 5 equals 0. So that means that the velocity of object A is either positive 1 meter per second, or the velocity of object A is positive 5 meters per second. So how do we know which it is? Well, if we looked back at the original slide, the velocity of object A was positive 5 meters per second. 
So that's not the answer that we want. That was our initial case. This was the original speed of VA. That always should be one of your solutions, because if they don't collide together, then the momentum of the system and the kinetic energy of the system will stay constant. So again, all the equations are saying are what two velocities of object A and object B will give me this, the same initial momentum that I had and the same initial kinetic energy that I had. Well, one of the answers is if they never collide, if they have the same velocity that they had at the beginning, they will have the same momentum and kinetic energy. But that's not the solution we want. We wanted the other solution which is that the velocity of object A is moving to the right at one meter per second. So it slowed down, but it's not moving to the left again. If it should have been to the left, we would have gotten a negative answer here. It all works out in the math. Then to solve for the velocity of object B, we just substitute it back in. The velocity of B is nine minus two times the velocity of A, which is going to be positive seven meters per second. Again, if I would have plugged in my other answer of 5, I would have had 9 minus 10, which would have given me a velocity of object B of negative 1 meter per second, which again was its initial velocity. So one of the pairs of velocities is always going to correspond with if they don't collide, and the other one is the solution that you want. If you don't get the original velocities out as one of your answers, then you know that there is a mistake. You need to go back and double check the math, make sure that you didn't forget a negative sign, make sure that you set everything up correctly. This also, if this is on the AP test, and this is the multiple choice section, knowing that object A, one of the solutions is going to be its original velocity of five meters per second, that will help you with the factoring a little bit. You know that one of the terms is going to have to be something that gives you that original velocity, and so you can figure out what the other term is. So that's just a little trick as to how to figure out the factors when you're going through and doing this quickly.